A point of very hard debate uh, has been whether this virus can be a man-made one, a man-made artifact or just a natural one. And you have also written article on that. Uh, in connection yes. with that, uh, I'd like to ask you this question. Uh, to begin with, uh, we'd like to understand uh, how do the virions appear naturally? I mean, how do they originate? And can they at all be man-made? Uh, how is it possible to produce a virus? All right, so you are asking me lots of questions. I don't know where to start from, but let me start from the last question. Is it possible to make a virus? Human, is it possible for a group of human beings to make a virus? The answer is yes. The short answer is yes. But is it doable at the present time? Is it, uh, is it possible to uh, artificially manufacture this particular coronavirus SARS-CoV-2? My answer is not in the next 100 years. Even at the level at which we understand molecular biology, even at the level at which we can manipulate DNA and RNA, next 100 years we won't be able to do it. And the reason is the following, that this coronavirus has, as you know, every virus has uh, some letters. The letters are either uh, comprised either a DNA molecule or an RNA molecule. This particular virus is an RNA virus, contains RNA. So it's a string of letters A, U, G, and C. And this string of letters in the, in the present coronavirus is uh, 29,900 letters long. Or let's say 30,000 let alphabets long, letters long. So these 30,000 letters have to be assembled in a particular way such that the virus can infect, such that the virus can replicate and all of this. It has lots of properties, biological properties that the virus must satisfy. And these biological properties have come about through millions of years of evolution, through, through a large number of years of playing, uh, playing around with arranging these letters. And after millions of years of evolution, we got this virus. We do understand the virus, but to be able to put together uh, a, a new virus with uh, you know exactly the same properties is is not easy for those of us who understand who do this kind of work. It is going to be extremely difficult. So the short, like I said, the short answer is: Is it possible to manufacture a virus, man-made man manufacture a virus? The answer is yes, you can technically, in principle, yes. But practically, can you? It's going to be almost impossible. Certainly not this coronavirus because it is such a large virus. I think it is the largest known. I, 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 I may have to be corrected, but I think it's the largest known or the largest meaning the longest RNA uh, sequence, largest known coronavirus. So for this to have been made another 100 years will elapse. Uh, and I probably am being optimistic. Uh, the uh, question is, how, does, how do they originate? So this is... This is like a naked piece of RNA wrapped in some protein and this naked piece of RNA does a lot of work and like I said that uh, it, has, it has never been resolved completely how DNA arose in the first place. We don't know that. So there are lots of theories about, you know, um, uh, huge temperature rises as a result of lightning and uh, that caused some molecules to come together. That's the primordial soup and from where uh, DNA arose. We, I, I really don't know how a DNA or uh, RNA originated, but uh, let's take that for granted. However it originated, then it evolves. It evolves by acquiring new kinds of letters, new kinds of letter changes and so on and so forth. So it's like a storybook. You can transform a chapter of a storybook to give it a new twist to the story. Uh, a detective story, you can change a few pages to give it a new twist to the story. Similarly here, uh, if you grant me that RNA and DNA evolved somehow, then over the period of evolution, uh, these changes take place. These are natural changes, random changes, and these give new twists to the, to the tale. Uh, in this particular case, the twist is like it gives it a new function to the virus and it evolves for a long period of time and that's how uh, a virus originates. Uh, that's how the SARS-CoV-2 originated, presumably from viruses that were pre-existing and it is uh, an evolved virus evolved from a pre-existing virus. Um, so the, 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 uh, the, the, the debate that's raging is whether it's a man-made virus, whether some Chinese Wuhan lab that has a P4 facility 
uh, of a high con containment facility for research on viruses, etc., whether it actually could have been made in a Wuhan P4 lab. Um, well, the verdict, uh, I don't know is whether the verdict is out or not, but uh, United States, Mr. Donald Trump was the highest, uh, sus suspected this at the highest level, and he uh, appointed committees and appointed detect U.S. detective agencies, etc. Uh, day before yesterday, the detective agency essentially cleared that, no, it was not man-made, uh, it's not a man-made virus. Now, they have their own ways of investigation. I don't know how they investigate and come to these conclusions, but I can tell you how uh, we come, we as biologists, we as evolution, um, we who study evolution, uh, come to these kinds of conclusions. So I'll quickly give you some figures and that will hopefully convince you and, and convince my viewers and listeners that uh, the data that are available is more consistent or, or is completely consistent evolutionary perspective as opposed to having been tinkered by human beings. So what's the data? So we know that there is a coronavirus in the back. We know that there are coronaviruses in other animals, including another um, animal called the pangolin. And I just take, talk about the bat, the pangolin, and the human. Pangolin is an anteater, so it, it's, a, it's a scaly anteater. Um, the bat we all know. So there is a coronavirus in the bat, there is a coronavirus in the pangolin, and there is a coronavirus in the human. And there are multiple coronaviruses in the human. The, uh, for example, uh, 15 years ago, or maybe 10 years ago, the SARS uh, severe acute respiratory uh, sy syndrome that took place, that was also due to a coronavirus. Uh, MERS, the uh, camel-mediated um, coronavirus that was, um, there was an outbreak in the Middle East, which killed a large number of people. Uh, actually, the, the, that was a very, very cruel virus. Uh, it killed 34% of the 100 people it infected, 34 of them were killed. So um, it, that was a very cruel virus. So we know of history of coronaviruses among humans. So if you take a rat, corona, a, a bat coronavirus, and if you take a pangolin coronavirus, and if you take human SARS-CoV-2, and you take other human, so, Today, we know that there are seven different coronaviruses that infect humans. Uh, there may be more, but we've identified seven, of which three are kind of dangerous, the SARS-CoV-2, the SARS-CoV, and the MERS. And there are four other types that, are, that don't cause any uh, much disease and don't cause, cause much distress. So they, they are kind of benign. All right. If you take the DNA, the RNA sequence of the bat coronavirus and ask yourself, how similar, how identical is it to the human coronavirus? What one finds is that if you compare letter by letter, you find that it is 96 to 98 percent similar, identical. Letter by letter, it's identical. So it's like two storybooks. Every word, every letter in these storybooks is almost similar, only 2 percent different. So that's one piece of information. The bat coronavirus is 98% or 96% similar to the human coronavirus, uh, SARS-CoV-2. The second piece of information is that there are two pangolin coronaviruses that have been sequenced. One uh, of these are from China. And uh, we've compared that sequence, the pangolin coronavirus sequence with the human coronavirus sequence. So if you look at those two, you, you find that one is 90% identical with the human SARS-CoV-2, the other is 92% identical with human SARS-CoV-2. So let's take on an average 91%. So the bat human coronavirus SARS-CoV-2 is 98% or 96%. The uh, pangolin and human is uh, 90, 91%. Now, if I take SARS-CoV, the previous coronavirus outbreak versus SARS-CoV-2, what is the identity? It's only 79%. If I take uh, MERS and uh, SARS-CoV-2, MERS is the other coronavirus that was mediated through, through the camel and killed a lot of people in the Middle East. If I take MERS coronavirus and human coronavirus, uh, the SARS-CoV-2, it's only 50% identical. So the human coronaviruses are less identical than the pangolin coronavirus or the bat coronavirus. So, if you put together all of this data, the most uh, plausible uh, model is that 
it arose in the bat. How it arose, we don't know, but it was available in the bats. And we know that, uh, you know, from one animal to another animal, these viruses can, can cross, uh, um, you know, infect uh, another species. So the bat coronavirus infected the pangolin coronavirus, which in turn infected cross-species and in started it, it, it to infect humans. So we think that uh, an evolutionary, comparing these RNA sequences and evolutionary scenario explains the entire uh, the evolution of the SARS-CoV-2 and we don't really need to invoke human intervention. Now, does that mean that human intervention could never happen there? We are not sure. But all that we are saying is that in, uh, there is also another competing model, which is the evolutionary model as opposed to human intervention model. And we think that the data are completely compatible with the evolutionary model.